there's a dog that had a jacket that looked like the one you just saw. Only um, we were busy going to shows and showing other dogs. And so what happened was it got very, very long. It got very, very long. And when it got very long, I decided that I didn't really want to strip this dog all the way down to undercoat. So what I would do would be to pull out half of the jacket, which I did. In other words, I rolled up. I rolled up the coat, and I pulled half of the longest hairs. I stripped out half of the longest hairs, all the way down to the elbow. I pulled out half of the longest hairs. Now you can see that underneath it's very thin. But what happens is, because he lives at home and he's not being shown, I didn't really want to take him all the way out. I just want him to have sort of a nice, nice looking coat. This is a, but this isn't a show coat yet. It will be a show coat in about a month or so because already I can feel the new hair coming under. And when the new hair comes under, then I'll pull some more of the longer top coat. And I can't give you a time frame because each dog grows hair at a different rate of speed. But he hadn't been, he hadn't had anything done to him for quite a while. So consequently, this um, got very long. And if you put your fingers underneath, you can feel the prickles of the new hair coming in. It's there. But I would roll this. This is real easy to do when it's this long because you can simply pull out the longest tears. You're doing that, Charlotte, rather than actually, you're not measuring it, you're just sort of fluffing it up and using uh -huh. lighter pressure with your thumb. Yes. Your thumb, right? And when I decide how much, how much do I take out at any given time, muscle memory tells you how much I'll pressure just, to do with your thumb. I'll, yes, I'll just I'll just brush it and look at it and I'll say, well, I think I could take some more off. So I go back to work and I take some more off until I get until I get to where I want to be. But I also notice I also pull it back this way, and you can see what the coat used to be like when you look right here. It's very thick. And there's lots of undercoat in there. Now what I would have to do to keep a watermark from forming here, or the line, a lot of dogs you see, there's this nice new jacket here and then poof, I would use my coarser knife and I would comb it backwards across this and I would take out that undercoat that causes that poof. I would take out all this undercoat right in this area so because you see the lighter hair this is a good one to see on because you can see all that light hair under there is undercoat. Well, if I don't do anything to this, and I'm only working up here, then I have then I have a funny looking uh, imbalance. So, take this out here in this area this way, and I'll pull it that way. And then I might take my stone and come here and blend in the elbow into the into the into the body. But that should give me that should give me a smooth look right in there, and also on the shoulder. I want to be sure to take out the fuzz on the shoulder because I wanted that same smooth look you just saw. And that's a simple matter with my fine knife, again, of combing. As the new hair comes in, I'm combing out the old, longer undercoat because this has been stripped all the way down. And pretty soon, it's thin now, but pretty soon I'll have that new coat coming under and I'll pick off the longer hairs and I'll have a nice, really nice jacket. It's a different way of doing it was a different way of putting a dog into a jacket than completely stripping it all the way down. I still think that probably your best coat is the one that you strip completely down. But um, this is an alternative method. If you take it all the way down, if you take the dog's jacket, all the, all the harsh outer coat off, and leave only the undercoat, at about eight weeks or so, you defuzz all that undercoat, then you have a longer jacket, a shorter undercoat, and you have a, a really nice brand new coat for the whole dog. But you can slick this whole you can slick this whole thing down. Again, I could do this. I can use this knife and I can do exactly what I did with her. If I if I if I really wanted to, I could rake it this way. Take out there's still some undercoat I could take out. 
and it will tighten that jacket down. Well, if you let a dog go, if you let a dog go till the time that this just this is this is all one length, which it pretty much is, and it's pretty kind of dead looking. Um, I think the only thing that you could do, if I wanted to put this dog in the show ring in three or four weeks, I would have to do a little bit of scissoring. Otherwise, if I pull this all out, he'll have nothing. I could pull half of it out. And if I didn't make it too thin, but I think I'll, I would have to in that case, but I, I would not just scissor only scissor because my belief is that you, you should strip all the hair. You should always have new hair coming in. But only in an emergency would I use the scissors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Except that this particular dog has been, has been sitting at home. And uh, when I started working on him uh, about three or four weeks ago, he was just a, he was a ball of fuzz. So we're up to this point now. Oh, I pick us for, yeah, absolutely. But if I, the thing is, if I, if I didn't think I might take him in the show ring, if I didn't think I might take him in the show ring, I would probably take most of that off. Just so it would start coming in new. But if I did that, I would be up to there. You know, I'd have just this left. And if I thought I was going to show him, and I don't know if I will, but if I thought I was going to show him, I, didn't, I wouldn't want to just make this all naked. So I would have to do what I could. Here, yeah. It's not too hard. Yes. No, they don't. I don't think they should be. I think you want to see if you have if you have a dog that moves well, um, why not show it off? Yeah, six or eight. We have to show the dog from now. Yes. Go ahead and scissor and. I'd have to. I would mostly strip till it. Oh, for Montgomery, no, that's more than six or eight weeks. Let's say rotating. Okay, like from this is February to May. Okay, from February to May, I would mostly strip till I got to the point where it looked kind of thin. And then I would have to, if I wanted to, if I still needed correcting, I would have to use a little scissors. But technically, you shouldn't. Yeah, at this point, if I was just only going to show him in October, from February to October, I'd take this all out. I'd put the, yeah, I'd take most of this out and let it come in new. And I'd be working on the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have to work on the whole time. But you, you, don't, you don't want a scissor un, if you don't have to. It's only an emergency thing, I think. If you do take 